Guys, when you're building a website, whether it's for yourself or your business or a brand, one of the hardest things to do is actually find a domain name that is short and relevant and available. Thanks to .tech domains, finding the, the perfect domain is actually much easier. Programmers, tech startups, and brands finally have a domain of their own. This is why Intel, Viacom, and even the Consumer Electronics Show are now using .techs for their domain. So don't wait, there's a Black Friday sale coming up. It's the perfect time to secure your domain at 95% off. You can pre-register before the 23rd of November to get an additional 10% off on top of that. You just have to go to www.go.tech forward slash Chris Hawks. That's go.tech forward slash my name, Chris Hawks. And you can pre-register now. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, what we're talking about is polymorphism. So you get asked this question in a job interview and, and you're like, what? Um, that's easy. So all I got to do is just go off of my word bank and just go out with the um, or pull out the definition, a feature of a programming language that allows routines to use variables of different types at different times. So that makes sense, right? You just tell the job interviewer that definition and they'll think that, they, that you know what you're talking about. Well, hopefully, but most likely not. They're going to want some sort of demonstration or something to show that you truly know what polymorphism is in computer science. Uh, polymorphism is the ability to have functionality inherited and implemented from base classes to subclasses. So for instance, if you have an animal class and an animal is like a base class, so like there's obviously all types of animals. I mean, you could argue humans are animals. Some people say that they're not. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but there's different uh, types of animals, obviously. There's multiple types, but uh, all the different types of animals that there are, they all derive from an animal. So like you want to structure your computer logic to be, to be the same thing. So if there are traits and functionality of an animal that all animals have, like eating, breathing, sleeping, pooping, things like that, then you're going to want to define all that functionality on one base class and not have to do that for every single type of animal because there's millions of types, right? So you could have millions of different types of animals that all derive from the same animal base class. So what does that look like? It looks like something like this. So you have a cat and then you have a dog and then you have a koala and they're all three animals and they all, like I said, they all sleep and things like that. So if you wanted to have functionality like that, so because all these animals derive from the same base animal class, they all know how to speak, eat, and die, and they can do so in different ways, but they can share a lot of the same functionality. So, um, for instance, you know, a dog's obviously going to, you know, wolf, a cat's going to meow, and a koala's going to do some sort of garble gawk thing. I'm not really sure what the hell it is. So what does this look like in code? I have a basic .NET Core application here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a animal class. So I'll say public class animal. And this is going to have one string that you end up setting on it, which we'll just call voice. Uh, all right, we have a get set. And then um, we're going to go ahead and have a public method on here that is also a string. And we're just going to say speak. And this is a function. So this is just going to simply return this dot voice or we have to return it uh, return this dot voice all right so now if we have three um three of our animals that all derive from that base class let's go ahead and paste it down here so now we can go ahead and stamp out three animal objects let's go ahead and declare that animal dog equals new animal and the voice equals wolf all right, so that's our first animal object. If we did the same thing for the cat, and then finally do the same thing for the koala. Uh, all right, so now we have these three objects here, and all right, so all three of these objects are animal objects. So what if we wanted to go ahead and just console uh, write line? We're going to just console, just, just do, uh, sh we'll use a uh, string interpolation here. And we'll just call each one of the, the speak methods here. All right, so if we go ahead and run this control F5, it'll run it and keep it open. You can see that we have this uh, wolf meow garble back. 
Now, what I want to show you here is if we go ahead and put a breakpoint on this console right line and actually press our debugger, we're going to hit this line. And if I hover over the dog, I want to show you that it's of, if you look at this, console app 2 dot animal. So it is an animal type, which is clear because we're saying it's an animal type and we're saying it's a new animal. Here, here's the, the issue, though. It's like, well, you want to be a little bit more explicit than saying it's an animal because clearly a dog's an animal, but you want this to be a dog because it's making the wolf noise, right? And then you want this to be a cat. All right, and then you want this to be a koala. All right, so now we have three different classes. So if we go ahead and rerun this app, and we hit the line, and you go and you highlight over each one of these now, you can see that it's console app two dot dog. So this is a dog object now, even though you said, hey, um, it, you know, it's also of type animal. So through polymorphism, it can be considered both an animal and a dog, um, but it cannot be considered. You can't have a cat be considered a dog, uh, but you can have a cat can be considered an animal and a dog can be considered an animal. So hopefully that makes uh, sense to you guys. Now, the reason why this is beneficial is because what if you needed to have all these values in a list? So if I were to say, you know what, I need a list of, uh, let's just say animals and we'll say uh, my animals equals new list and we'll instantiate the list because we're using generics. We need to bring in the using statement. And then from here, what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and add in my animal. So I can say dog, cat, and then koala. Because they're all of animal objects, they, they can all be considered animals, I can put them in a list of animals. Now, I cannot put them in a list of dogs, though. So if I were to put this in a, uh, if I were to have a dog here and say that, you know what, um, my list of dog can only contain dogs, you can't even fit this dog in here because the dog is even though it, it is it, it, a dog is considered an animal like th this needs to explicitly be a dog and you declared it to be an animal of type dog so this would actually need to be changed over explicitly to dog so you can see that this list now works but in many cases you want to keep it as um, the generic base class and use polymorphism to do something like uh, you know, if I let I said this is a list of animals, then I could have all those different types of animals, and there could be millions of different types of animals. And then instead of doing this, I'll just kind of loop over the animals here. I'll just uh, I would just say uh, for each of our animal in uh, my animals, then we'll say console dot line. And we'll say animal.speak. So because we've used the base class as uh, you know the, the generic placeholder for the type of objects that we have, we need to stop our server and restart it so that those lines will go away. Um, and it would be helpful if I actually press Control F5 so that the, the, the screen remains. But you can see it just looped through, and it treated um, these three different types. Now, this is of type koala, this is of type cat, this is of type dog, but it can also be considered an animal. So because I said a list of animals, it's allowed to have all three, so you're using polymorphism. That's the power of polymorphism, and that's what it is in a nutshell. So if you guys are interested in learning more about C Sharp, uh, I recommend this course I just created for .NET Core. I'm adding to it. Um, anybody that buys my course, I actually will give them support so they'll have access to my personal email. I mean, I'll try to answer as much as I can. I can't make any promises there, but um, for sure, anybody that buys my course, I do make it a, a priority to get back to them when they reach out to me uh, for any sort of questions that they have. So I can't really be like your personal mentor, but I can try to at least uh, point you in the right direction and uh, and help you out when you get stumped and things like that. So And that, that goes for any course that you buy. So if you buy any of my python.net, any of that stuff, then um, I'll go ahead and do that. Also, if you guys could please vote up my, uh, my courses as well. I, I need any review as, as uh, any review I can get and hopefully they're good. I appreciate all the support from you guys out there uh, and girls. If you would please vote up, comment and subscribe. I definitely uh, appreciate that. It helps me. Have a good day. Bye.